distinguished uh, participants, um, I, I guess this time. Uh, so, so let's start the session. Uh, good morning, all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is an honor for me uh, to be your moderator uh, today on this session on water and global changes. Uh, those global changes, uh, we all know them. Uh, uh, they face, uh, we have to face the challenges of those global changes. Uh, uh, our water systems are already under stress uh, and those global changes will put uh, those uh, systems, our water resources systems, under even more stress. Uh. So well, what are those changes? I'm not going to lecture about uh, what is going on. We all know it. Uh, the, the, the main change uh, is uh, what we are already facing a long time, uh, the population growth uh, uh, with a corresponding uh, socio-economic uh, development. And socio-economic development by itself is, is of course very good, but it leads to more demand. Uh. It leads also that we will go to a more urban society. Uh, we will have more people living uh, in urban areas which request specific attention uh, for urban water management. Of course, we have to face the pollution uh, that relates uh, to uh, more people, uh, more industrial activities, uh, and we're working on it. Uh. But also very importantly is that, yes, we are now facing a situation where we have true urbanization, uh, um, maybe a bigger difference and gap uh, between the rural and urban uh, uh, people. Uh, and we have to, also with water management, uh, uh, to deal with uh, trying uh, to uh, close that gap uh, between urban and rural development. Uh, so we have to face uh, those challenges, uh, face the challenges, uh, in particular uh, with the second one, uh, and that is climate change. Uh, the climate change. Uh, uh, the first one is that uh, the average will change. Uh, the average that we deal with in water management, uh, it will be drier uh, in some places, will be wetter in other places. But also the extremes, uh, uh, where we have to face more floods and droughts. Uh, and the combination of the socio-economic developments and climate change is our challenge. Uh, uh, so. Having to face those challenges, uh, well, what can we do? If we talk about socio-economic uh, developments, uh, then yeah, that's what we have been doing as water people already for a long time. Uh, 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 but now with these new challenges, uh, we have to find even to work harder to find more water and use uh, the existing water uh, more efficiently. With respect to climate change, yes, what can we do about it? Of course, the first thing we have to do is about is, is mitigation, eh? try to reduce uh, the, the emissions. Uh, but we as water management cannot do much about that. Eh? It is, we can do a little bit about our wetlands eh, with hydropower, eh, but, but what we as water management have to do is to adapt our systems. Eh? And so uh, what energy is for mitigation is water eh, for adaptation. Eh? So that is our challenge. Uh, so in this series uh, we will uh, share some experience uh, of uh, what we can do uh, uh, to face those challenges. Uh, um, we have seven distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, five of them uh, you sit, you see uh, uh, sitting in front of you. Two will join us online. Uh, um, we will have the seven presentations first, and after uh, the presentations, we have a question and answer session uh, in which we give uh, the floor, the, the floor, uh, the opportunity to, to ask questions uh, to the, the panelists. Uh, so, with further ado, uh, I would like to introduce the first uh, speaker, uh, and that is Honorable Mr. Uh, Masova Peter Gatkuot. Uh, he is a minister of water resources from South Sudan, and with his background uh, of being uh, a lawyer, uh, 
Uh, but having worked also in the infrastructure, uh, I think he's the perfect, in a perfect situation uh, to be a minister of water resources, uh, uh, because the enabling conditions of the wall uh, are very important uh, to do something about it. So, His Excellency, can I ask you uh, to take the floor? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Leko van Beek, for, for the good uh, start. Uh, first of all, let me register my thanks to the Arab Republic, Government of Arab Republic of Egypt, especially for the Ministry of Water Resource and Irrigation, for giving us the platform to come and participate in this Cairo Water, Water Week. This is the second time for us to come and, and participate. Uh, this is a good chance to interact with specialists and experts from different areas of the world to come and share their knowledge and, and expert. Uh, I will go through our representation and I will focus on, on South Sudan as an example uh, because we are facing many challenges, especially for the last three years regarding to the global and climate change. Uh, let me start with the presentation outline, if, you, if, we, if we are together. Uh, the presentation outlined, I uh, will go through first introduction uh, and water infrastructure, uh, current situation of uh, water resource uh, management in South Sudan, a uh, nice uh, necessary step to regulate water resource in the country. And also, I'll go through potential and opportunities for the durable solution to the water resource management, flood and drought management in the country. And also, at the end, we'll go for way forward and conclusion. Slide. In the introduction, uh, we just want to define the, the water security because when we are talking about the climate change, uh, definitely we are talking about the water security. When we talk of water and global change, it's all about water security and the scarcity issues, which is attributed by the two factors. One is the population growth. For example, in uh, the Nile Basin, population growth from two, 238 million to 272 million people. This is from the State uh, of Nile Basin report 20. 21. That means there is increase for the last 10 years of more than 44 million people in the, in the region of uh, Nile Basin. And also climate change is a factor also affecting the it, uh, security, water security, flooding and drought frequency in the, in the region, especially in, in, in Uganda, in South Sudan, in Sudan, it's affected by the, by the climate change. Uh, water security is commonly defined as the capacity of the popula of, uh, population to safeguard sustainable access to adequate quantity of acceptable quality, quality water for sustaining livelihood. This is from the State of Nile Basin 2021 report when they define what is the water, water security. And also to address this challenge, we need cooperation among stakeholders as a key driver for sustainable and equitable utilization of the water resource. In the Nile Basin, if we are taking as an example, there is a 10 country which share the Nile resource. It starts from Rwanda, Tanzania, Burundi, and Uganda, and Kenya, and South Sudan, and, and Sudan, and also, also Egypt. Without cooperation between the Basin country, we cannot achieve the resource, or we cannot achieve how we manage or we utilize the water resource in the whole basin country. Next slide. This picture has been taken last week from, uh, if, if you go back again, this picture has been taken last week from Unity State, Bantu Town. If you can see the picture, the level of water surrounding all the village of Bantu Rup Corner. 
It never happened for the last 60 years in this area because it's higher land, it's considered part of the higher land in the state. But right now, if you look into the picture, that's the situation right now in, 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 in Unity State. When you expect more water is coming because there is increase of level of water in the Lake, Lake Victoria. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, now, let us talk about the climate change. Uh, South Sudan surface area is covered by nearly 18% of fresh water. That means 18% this report since 2019. But 2020, we experienced floods, and 2021, we may expect the area covered by the water could reach up to 2025. Uh, the country become one of the fastest warming locations on the globe. That's according to the report we received from the uh, East Africa uh, Flood Forecaster Center, and also according to the Global Climate Risk Index mapping, which ranks South Sudan number eighth on the global. It's become very hottest area. Uh, since 2009 to date, more than two million people have been displaced by the flood in in large part of in large part of the country. The flood for from 2019, 2020, 2021 affect most of the state. Eight out of ten states has been affected and made by the flood. Next slide. This picture has been taken from Fanyak area, one of the most affected area by the flood this year. This is inside the town, how people are living right now. And we expect more water coming from Bahral, Bahral Jebel. That's the situation we are facing now in, in, in South Sudan. It never happened for the last 60 years. But this, for the last three years, two years and three years, that's the situation we are living in now. Next slide. Now, let us talk about water storage infrastructure. In an ideal situation, that's what uh, the, the development country and undevelopment country put as an index to know if you are part of the development country or not based on how you store water in the country. Uh, therefore, South Sudan have a huge gap in terms of water storage capacity per capita water storage. Since the independence of South Sudan, there is no water infrastructure has been put in place because since South Sudan took independence 2011, it went to the war in 2013 and also in 2016. 2018, 2020, they signed peace agreement. Now we implement the peace, peace agreement. Most of the water infrastructure when the country is one, has been built either part of Sudan, northern Sudan, or west of Sudan, or some part of uh, eastern Sudan. Just only there is a proposal of Jungule Canal, just only one of the biggest water infrastructure facilities should be built in South Sudan during uh, 19 centuries. But uh, it, never took, uh, it never happened up to now. So that means there is a lack of water infrastructure in the country up to now. Uh, the existing water storage infrastructure are the normal infrastructure, Hafir, many S dams, water supply facilities. That's the only water infrastructure we have in the country. Knowing that most of the land, like 18% to 20% of the land under the water in South Sudan. There's a potential of water resource management infrastructure development has been put in place as a plan in the Ministry of Water Resource and Irrigation, and also from the country, as there is a potential uh, project of dam in Fula 1, uh, Fula 2, Baden, Shakoli, Laki, and Juba Baraj, and Jungule Canal, and Sioux multi-purpose dam, which we are developing with the, with the Ministry of Water Resource of, of, of Egypt. This is slide show one of the road in Jungle State, especially in area of low wear. In the dry season, this area, people are, in the dry season, people are suffer, there is no water. But in the, in the rainy season, that's the situation we are in now. Coming from market, going to the village is, is, is difficult in this area. This one happened just 
last year, and the same situation is repeated right now. That's the situation in, in, in South Sudan. Uh, next slide. Uh, to give you the clear picture, uh, the Sud region used to absorb more than 33 billion cubic liters, just only in Jungle State. This is per year. Every year it's uh, observed more than uh, 33 billion cubic liters of water, just only in the area of Jungle, Jungle, Jungle State. In, in 2019, South Sudan received additionally 65 billion cubic meters of water, just only in the Sud, in the Sud area, which usually receive just 33 billion cubic liters. But in 2019, 2020, it received more than 65 billion cubic liter. That means there is a lot of change in the in the level of the water. In 2021, the total flood water found in the Sud wetland and surrounding areas increased to over 120 billion cubic liter, which is more than capacity of the Sud itself. That's why most of the area of Jungle State and Central Equatoria and Eastern Equatoria and part of the unity state have been merged under, under the water. That's the situation we are facing now because of increase of level of water in Lake Victoria, also the heavy rainfall in most of the area of South, South Sudan. Livelihood, poverty and livestock and wildlife habitats are constantly destroyed. If you can see from the, from the fixture, that's the situation people are facing in some area in South Sudan. People are fighting over the high land. Uh, conflict between the wildlife and human, if you can see, the, if you can see the, the picture, the conflict between wildlife and human have increased recently into snake bites and uh, hyena and crocodile. In, in SSBC in South Sudan has been reported more than 26 vulnerable people, they are women and kids, have been bite by the, by the snake in region of Warab State and, and Bahar al-Ghazal. That means it affects even the life of the, the wildlife in, in the area. Now there are, people are fighting around the highland in most of the area like uh, Bahar al-Ghazal and, 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 Jungle, and Jungle State. And also it affects the cost of the humanitarian because South Sudan just come out from war. Uh, some areas need uh, humanitarian assistance. And with the country, with the limit infrastructure, there is no consonant road to connect the state with the capital. It becomes difficult for the humanitarian agency to, to provide food for, for, for needed population around, 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 around the country. Next slide. Now, we are talking about flooding scenario. Increase of water level in Lake Victoria, one of the reasons there is a flood in, in South Sudan, plus definitely the climate change. Heavy rainfall in, in the country also affect uh, the area. Uh, the water costs are seated and blocked by the aquatic weeds. As you know, South Sudan have many rivers, but for the last 40, 50 years, there is no dredging of the river, and the aquatic weeds, it's controlling the river basin, that's why it will be difficult. It cannot store more, more water. Uh, Propious flood water for 2019-20 never received before current flood of 2011. That means the level of water since 2019 remain 2020 plus the flood of 2021. High velocity flow from the river discharging from a Subi highland also reduce the normal flow of the Bahar al Jabal. As you know, the highland is a Subi, we have two rivers, a Kobo and some small stream coming from the highland of a Subi. They come and meet with the Bahar al Jabal in canal area. That they form what we call White Nile. Because of the high flow of the water, from the highland of Subia, it blocked the water coming from, from, uh, from Bahar al Jabal. So the water from highland of Subia will proceed to the White Nile. The water from Bahar al Jabal will go back down again to Bahar al Ghazal, which is caused flood 
at this time. Uh, next slide. If you see the face fix of the young, this child, she's looking for water for drink. The picture can tell you what is the situation. And down here, you can see also through the other pictures. The water is merging all the village, and at the same time, there is no access for safe drinking water in some part of the country. Uh, development of water, uh, uh, if we are talking about the way forward to, to solve all these issues, development of water resource master plan is needed in the country. Uh, dredging and removal of aquatic weeds from the river channel is needed also. Construction of dike to protect villages and, and cities is needed. Construction of multiple navigation, irrigation canals and channels like Jumbula Canal, if people agree later on. Development of water, harvesting storage is needed. Construction of uh, sufficient reservoir to regulate flow of water, like dams or anything. Uh, establishing of a flood and drought forecasting center. And installation of hydromet network in the country. In conclusion, we are looking forward for partnership to develop the water resource infrastructure, private sector engagement, bridging the gap between humanitarian and development intervention in the country. That's what we think is needed from our partner and our friends. Now, just give me one minute. I'll give you some pictures to present the situation of climate change in the country. Let's go quickly through the slide. That's the situation. People are eating. That's one, two. That's the governor. Go back. That's Dr. Joseph Mantuil. He's the governor of Unity State. He's a, he's a graduate from Al Mansura University. He's now underwater. You can see the level of water. He's moving around he's the capital of Unity State. That is the governor of, uh, of Unity. The most uh, richest state with the oil. Another slide. That's the situation. That's the suit. Thank you very much.